Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux on YouTube. And I am a little bit late to the party on this one. So I have been a distro hopper in the past. You know, not so much lately. Obviously, I've been on Debian for a good while. But, um, you know, I started off with Linux Mint and I went to uh, Arch-based distros and so on and so forth. So I had a lot of different... Uh, distros that I went and hopped from one to the other really quickly. So let me actually open this up. Um, I have a picture of what it used to look like. So I had, <laughs> I don't know, this is a short, this is actually a small number. Um, I had probably a dozen uh, USB sticks with each its own ISO. And then, um, and then lately, you know, within the last few months, I've learned about something else, okay? And that is Ventoy. And so with Ventoy, you need one, which is amazing, you know? Um, let's take a look at this as far as features are concerned. And even just this picture tells you a lot about what this does. You know, you can put images or ISOs um, on one particular USB and it shows up when you boot. So it's fantastic for those of us that have been distro hoppers or that might just want to keep everything um, in one location and have access to it. So we're going to we're going to install and take a look at this today as far as downloads. Um, for those that are, you know, Linux users, there are two different ways to do this. And one is to download the tar GZ and the other is the uh, .iso. So let's go over and look at, I've downloaded both the tar.gz and the live CD. So there's obviously three different ways I would say to do this. And one, if, if the simplest way without using command line is to use the live CD. So if you're not a command line user, I would recommend getting uh, Bolina Etcher and use that. So all you would do would be to execute it and then go and get the ISO. And the target is this 128 gigabyte drive. I don't know if that's gonna take a long time or not. Um, and then you would select it and then flash and it should do it very, very easily. OK, so what's the other ways to do it? Well, let's go back to downloads. I've extracted the tar GZ and in this there is a Ventoy uh, web dot sh. OK, so let's let's actually do this real quick. You can go to downloads. And you can see that that ISO is right there. So if an LSBLK. So mine is this SDB. So what you would do would be to go and, you know, sudo dd if equals and then ventoy uh, live. What's wrong? Why can't I? Uh, there we go. Live CD. I don't know why I couldn't do that for a second. Okay, and then OF equals and then dev SDB and then status equals progress uh, BS equals 4M and O flag equals sync. And then that would be what I you could do really quickly, okay? But you can also do this. So let me let me uh, cancel that and go into this Ventoy. And now let's sudo and then run that Ventoy web sh. Okay, so you're going to go over here to this uh, to this website, which will be local. So I'm going to click on it by holding the control key down. I'm going to go over uh, back to my Firefox and there it is. And it's it automatically shows 
um, the file. Now make sure again that you are using the right S, um, um, USB. So all you have to do is hit install. It's going to warn you. It's going to warn you again. And there you go. And that's it. That's all that's need needed to be done. So there was three different ways to do that. Um, and now you can see it here. So let me go ahead and close this. And, and it looks blank, all right? What it's waiting on is for you to fill it up with ISOs, basically. So there might be a few that you might want to take a look at. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the two Debian ones that you might want to just add just to have. And I always like this um, firmware one. So it, this is the 11.6 non-free. And then you're going to want to go to the ISO CD. And you're going to want to pick this firmware 11.6 blah 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 net install and it's only 483 megabytes okay so let's go back and if you want a live non-free let's go over to this and iso hybrid and now you can pick whichever you want as far as iso so this would be the cinnamon one kde lxqt mate Standard would be GNOME, uh, GNOME, GNOME, whatever you want to call it. And then there's the XFCE uh, for non-free ISO, okay? And I'll, I want to give a little bit of a shout to uh, CrunchBang++, which is an open box, um, minimal Debian install, fantastic. There's also uh, Linux Mint Debian edition, as, an op as opposed to the, um, the Ubuntu-based uh, Linux Mint. And then there is something like you could use for like system rescue. And one of the reasons why I like this one is because it has a lot of different uh, tools. And I always make sure I have a uh, GParted ISO, and this has GParted uh, as part of its uh, tools. So, I'm going to go over here to um, my downloads, and I have a bunch of distros. So I'm going to actually just, and then included Arch here and Fedora, but uh, let me just go ahead and copy these, and let's just throw them all on this disk, okay? And it might take a few minutes for it to, um, for it to copy over, and so I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, now that everything has uh, been copied over, uh, it's just as simple as rebooting. So let me reboot. And for me on this uh, Dell, I have to hit uh, F12 when it uh, when I get to this point, and go down to the uh, Samsung. And so now you can see all the uh, ISOs that we copied over. And um, let's do a couple, okay, just so we can see. So that was the uh, CrunchBang++, okay. And interesting, now, I, like I said before, uh, I'm, I, I like CrunchBang++. It's open box with Debian and super, super lightweight, okay. Um, the one thing that is a little bit bad is that you can look at the live system or you can go to the installer. You would just have to reboot. So we'll look at the live system because we're not going to install. But uh, you, you, you would, if you want to install, you have, you know, most people have a way, a path during the live system to install. And, uh, and CrunchBang is not one of them. So I'm just going to go into the uh, live mode. This is, I don't know exactly what kernel they're even using on this one. It might be as simple as uh, updating. So I think you just type live and live. Okay, cool. So now you can see everything. Um, it's super, super lightweight. So let me go ahead and just open up a terminal. 
Um, and you get actually this welcome menu. That's pretty nifty. Uh, I haven't done this in a while. And I would go through this normally. Um, it's got 12 screens. I'm just going to go ahead and put that. And this looks like um, Terminator, this, uh, this terminal. So let's... Um, I don't know if NeoFetch is on here or not. Let me just look real quick. Nope. So how about... Let's just do this, free dot uh, slash age. Okay, so it's like 425, and this is a live environment, so I would guess it would be even lighter if you did an installation of this. Uh, so that's pretty pretty darn impressive. Um, and then, like I said before, it's a uh, it's open box, so it's um, a right click anywhere, you know, anywhere is right click uh, for the menu. Um, it comes with, uh, like I said, this is uh, Terminator, I think. Um, so web browser is Firefox. Nice. And then let's look at a couple more things. Genie, preloaded. And file manager, probably Thunar, right? Yep, Thun Thunar super snappy and then it comes with a bunch of other things pretty this is really nice it, it, it really is it's really nice okay so let's go ahead and exit and let's reboot again so we're going to hit f12 again right now and go down So there's a Windows on here, I know. <laughs> Don't judge me. Um, this is what I normally use to do my installations. This is firmware 11.6, the one that's highlighted. If you want, um, System Rescue is really good. Let's go ahead and, and look at that just for a sec. Most of you guys will know this already. Um, I think it's actually built on Debian and XFCE. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I was mistaken. <laughs> and I think I just have to hit Start X, right? All right. And so you can go System H Top gparted so that's this is really good you can just you know use gpartition editor in a live environment so if i wanted to i could just you know ditch <laughs> ditch whatever is on this hard drive like real quick um, and then there's other tools to work with but um, you get the idea and this is by the way this is really cool in terms of its um its effectiveness um, and that you know if you like let's say you're using gpart Parted, you know, G, you know, known partition editor, um, just the ISO. You don't even have, you know, you don't have access to like the internet, and you know, and if you are using uh, this particular um, uh, rescue ISO, you can go straight. You know, you can use the internet while you are uh, fixing something. So. Really, really good stuff. And let's restart. And let's just look at one more thing. Oh, that's our. It, it was built on Arch, by the way. I didn't even. I didn't recognize it until just now. Actually, um, funny, but the um, Gparted ISO that you um, that you would download from their website is built. Oops, I, I missed it is built on um, on Debian. I think a really old version of Debian too. Oh, I think let me just hit reboot again. I missed the uh, I missed the F12. OK. 
Okay. One more. I mean, you get the idea. This is a fantastic way to do this. And so I'm going to just go into the uh, uh, Debian XFCE Live. And it's going to be super vanilla, I would think. I mean, I haven't used, honestly, I haven't not used a, uh, a live... Um, desktop environment in a really long time. So OpenBox was, <laughs> was something that I usually just build and XFCE is something I usually just install as a part of a uh, minimal installation just so that I have as few packages as possible. This might take a second or two for it to, uh, to load. There we go. Yeah, this is as vanilla uh, a build as you can possibly get. So no, no, uh, no theming, no ricing, nothing. This is just vanilla right out of the box. So anyway, this has been a uh, this has been a uh, an interesting because I usually have something specifically Debian related, uh, but this tool has really saved my bacon a couple times. And, and it's really helpful for those of you who have not seen it, which I can't believe I'm kind of like last. <laughs> I think I'm last uh, to the party on this one. Uh, anyway, I'll talk to you later and uh, see you soon.